Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this particular video, we're going to be looking at using R Markdown, in particular focusing on learning how to use tables and also bullets and numbering. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. So I'm in R Markdown. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, start with getting our YAML header set up. So I'm going to go ahead and show this to you. So this is the basic setup. Uh, we just gave it a title. Notice the colon after that and also the three dashes at the top and the bottom in lines one and six. So title, tables and more. The author is ERT. Notice how I was going to put in today's date no matter what because we're using that little back tick. Again, this is the tick next to the number one on your keyboard. Uh, then this function right here, then we close it up with another back tick like that. And then the output is going to be an HTML document. So we've discussed these traits in other videos. Now what we're going to do is we're going to review how to make bullets. And so this is better to be seen rather than typed out directly. So let me see if I can do this for you. So when we're trying to do bullets, again, there's more than one way to do this. I need to mention that as well. But <clears throat> I like to do a tab and then I do another tab. Whoops, excuse me, I forgot. You do a tab, then you put a dash, heading one, two like that. Whoops, I forgot the second dash. Okay. like so and let's see if this will work out like we want so you can see how we're doing this right now and so if I put knit in here it's gonna want me to save it then we just run this I got to put a space here, otherwise it won't catch. There we go. If you can see closely, you can see that it kind of changed colors here a little bit. So now I run this. And so now you can see I have my headings here. So I have my heading one and then row one, row two. That's how you do it. So you got to make sure you put a space between that and the previous line where you have text. That's where I made a slight mistake at. So that's how you put in bullets or these are dashes here, but you know, you get the point. Now the same thing applies for uh, numbering. So I'm just going to copy and paste this to go a little bit faster. So notice carefully, there's a space here. Uh, so I have some text in line 16, then I have a space. Then I have my actual uh, numbering here. Now you have to put the numbers in manually if you're going to use the R Markdown uh, format. Remember, you can also do this with HTML. You can also do this with LaTeX. Uh, there's lots of different ways that you can get these numbering into your R Markdown output file. So this we're just using the, the style that you find with R Markdown, but there are other ways, like I mentioned, HTML and also LaTeX are the ones that I am familiar with. So we run this again. And so if you look off to your right, you can see here that we have our table headings and they like to put this box around here as well so that you can see that you have a, the bullets here indented. Also, you gotta make sure you indent things as well. I use the tab, um, so your, my tab is set kind of far you can see that, but um, of course, you can not have your tab set so much if you play with the, the options. Okay, moving on, we're going to take a look at making tables now. So let me go ahead and show you what we're doing here. All right, so in line 25, I'm loading the dplyr package. Then in line 26, I'm just making a table without any kind of formatting. So just with the, the output. Now inside here, what I'm doing is I'm taking the first three rows and the first three columns. That's what that one colon three comma one colon three inside the square brackets means. And then in my second row, I'm going to show you a table when you are using the cabal function from Knitter. So we're just going to head and go ahead and run this now.
All right. So we got all these messages here because we did not turn that off. That wasn't the purpose of this video. But if you look down here in this section right here, you can see, you can clearly see the table without any kind of formatting. This is what you would normally get as an output just using, you know, R, but down at the bottom, you can see how much more beautiful it is now. So this right here is, is a much more cleaner, more formatted, a prettier table, if you will, something much more closely aligned with APA formatting for those of you who are familiar with that. And so this is again, a tool for cleaning up your R markdown output when you're trying to knit an actual document. Now for our next trick here, we're going to rename some columns. So keep an eye on this. This is the same code as in line 27. What you see in line 33 here, this is the same thing in line 27. The difference now is that we're changing the name, the name of the columns. If you look in the lower right hand corner, right now MPG, CYL, and DISP are in lower case. And so what I'm doing over here in line 33 is I'm changing those to all caps. So I'm renaming the columns. I could have made it something more complicated than that, but this is what I chose for this demonstration. So I'm going to run this. And so now you can see, now look closely here. Right here, you can see it's lowercase, but down here is not uppercase. That's the main difference there. It's the same data as before, just now we have renamed the columns. So you know, a lot of times when you get data, they use a shorthand or abbreviations for column names to say space. But when you're sharing it with the audience, they might not be familiar with all the different acronyms and abbreviations that are used in the columns of your data. So by being able to rename these columns, it helps your audience to understand exactly what it is you are talking about. Now, for our last little trick here, we're just gonna show you how to put in a caption. Again, this provides, you know, like a title or more explanation about the text, whatever you want to call it. So <clears throat> again, all of this information right here is from the previous example in line 33, but now we just put in a new argument called caption right here and we give it a name example table for you, not the most clever name, but you get the point. And so now when we run this, If you look at the last table here, you see this little text right here, example table for you. And so you can put in a name for the table or whatever you want, however you want to use your caption, this is how you make it available for yourself. And so you're able to build your table and provide a lot of insight into it for your audience without having to do anything like manually, like in a Word document. So that's what this is able to do for you. So let's review what we talked about here and then conclude this video. So in this particular video, we learned how to make bullets or, you know, dashes or whatever you want to call them in this example right here, then numbering. Then we learned how to make tables, better looking tables using Cabal, a function from the knitter package. And then down here, we learned how to rename columns. That's what we learned here, this information right here. And our last trick for today was learning how to make the captions to provide more insight, more explanation to the data, excuse me, to the visualization that you are developing. So I hope that you were able to understand the ideas that we talked about. I want to thank you again for watching. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the director of educational research techniques. You take care and I'll see you in the next video.